morning, everyone. It's January 29th, 2021, and I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop. We have lots of fun stuff for you today. We're in the middle of Socialites, which is our free sew along. And with this sew along, you can sew along three inch, six inch, or nine inch blocks. The patterns are completely free. So today we're gonna to be working on block 17 by Ann Sutton. It's called Peace. And Lily's gonna pop up the image and show you her version of the block. So you can see kind of the colors that Ann did and her inspiration behind it. So Ann loves red and white. So that's a really cool version and she made all three. So that's awesome. And I know that those buttons are antique because I've been to her house and everything there is antique. Oh, wow. So um, I'm excited to show you this block. It's very easy. So that's nice because a couple of the last ones have been hard. So I'm going to show you different versions of it in addition to Anne's. Lots of different versions and what you can do with yours. And of course, any of these blocks, you can do three colors instead of two. You could you can change it around you don't have to follow it exactly so this first block is using quotation by zen chic this black one and it was made by Teresa, and it's the three inch size and then deborah made this one using figs and shirtings by fig tree terry made this one using folk tail by layla boutique sue made this one using shine on by bonnie and camille And I think this one might have a mistake, so just ignore it. Yeah, this one, um, I think she reversed. The bottom row is attached wrong, so we know that. Just ignore it. Oops. Yeah, so that one has a mistake, but that's okay. And then this one is Cider by Basic Gray, and Angel made this one. So I'm going to set these aside and put them in our serendipity bag. They fit nicely. Mm -hmm. And these are the blocks that I did. I used the Homestead Collection by April Rosenthal. And I did nine, six, and three. And then this background fabric is SKU 20708-36. It's from the On the Farm Collection, and I think it's a really good white on white dot. So I just have a bolt of it at home because it really will go with any designer's fabric. Uh, it probably wouldn't go with fig tree because it's too white, but it definitely will go with um, Lori's fabric or Bonnie and Camille's fabric or April Rosenthal's. So um, I like to have some backgrounds on hand. So, and I like my backgrounds to be pretty plain and I like how the dot is really small because I like things kind of small. So these are my blocks. I'm gonna add them into the bag. And I'm gonna show you some previous blocks that I have done. Now for this one, I'm using nine inch blocks and I'm using the Apricot and Ash collection. And this is part of the Apricot and Ash collection. And I'm doing nine inch blocks now. Now previously I had done, what size had I done before? Six, Six inch? inch? Six inch, sorry. <laughs> See, I can't remember <laughs> what I do daily. And so these are the blocks that I did the last three weeks. So if you wanna check those out, you can check out the last three live streams. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this, but we'll do something fun with it. So I have done peach, green, and brown. I'm gonna do another peach fabric today. And we are doing block 17. And I love when the patterns are just one page. That means it's easy. <laughs> Sorry. So we have a lot today, so I have to kind of get stuff out of the way. So this block is very simple. It's just... Um, four print squares, a background square, and four half square triangles. So if you are making the three inch size, you can use, you can either do it this method or you can use the H100 one inch triangles on a roll paper. If you're gonna do the six inch, you would need the two inch paper, which is H200, 
and if you're doing the nine inch, which is what I'm doing, you need the H300. So I'm gonna use H300 today, and I'm gonna start with A and C, and so I need two squares. You can see you need two A and two C, so that means I just need two papers from here. So I'm just gonna take two from right here, and when you're using, you can either do it the traditional way or this way. When you're working with triangle paper, the most important thing is to try to cut directly on the lines so that it's more accurate. And this one, what I will do is I will just write on here H300, and that just means that um, I'll just put this kind of with all the rest of my triangles on a roll, and I will know this is three inch for the future. So I'll just set that aside for the future. The fabrics that I'm using today, I decided to do another peach, and I thought that these florals might look pretty good with the big pieces. When I'm working with something this big, I want something a little bit bigger to show. So I'm gonna put my fabrics right sides together. I'm gonna iron, let's see, I'll start over here. So I'll probably iron, I'm gonna iron this corner, make it nice and flat, and then I'll put my paper on top. But usually I will put my fabrics together and then iron just to make sure it's nice and flat. And I do use steam. Let's see, and then I'm just gonna put this paper right on here. Put a couple of pins, and then I'll just cut around it, leaving just a small margin. So that is my A and C. Now if I was doing, sometimes when I'm sewing, I will cut like five or six blocks at one time and I'll put them on these design boards by Lori Holt and just stack them. So if I was doing like 10 blocks at a time or something, I would go ahead and put on here A slash C. And I know my handwriting's bad, but that way when I come back, if I come back two days later or something, I can remember, hey, this is what this is. Now, if I'm doing this today, I wouldn't write that, but it's just kind of, a lot of times I forget things I'm not sure if it's age or I have too much going on, but you know, anything to help. So I'm gonna put that there. And then I need one three and a half inch square of the background for the center of the block. So with that, I will just take a three and a half inch square Creative Grids ruler. You can cut either side. This is the wrong side, but it really doesn't matter. And using this ruler will help me not waste any fabric. So here, I have this big section left that I can use next week. So I'll put this aside. And this is our fabric B. So normally I would label it with my alphabeties, but they're not here. So there's B. And now for D, we need four three and a half inch squares. So from here, I'm gonna, see that little wrinkle? I'm gonna try to get that wrinkle out first. And I'm going to kind of move this out of the way. I'm gonna cut a three and a half inch section right here and see how many we can get. I think we'll probably be able to get three. And from here, I'll just do this and I don't have to think. One, two. You could fussy cut this, but I think it I don't think it needs it. So there's my D's. 
And then you see I've got this big piece of fabric left that I'll use, you know, to cut up into scraps or use it in my Swirling Stars quilt. That's my scrap quilt for 2021. So I will just pick a corner, any corner, pick a corner, any corner. Mm -hmm. And I will um, just cut a square off. Isn't that a song, pick a corner, any corner? Maybe I made it up. Maybe. It sounds familiar. I don't know. That's a Kimberly song then. <laughs> Anyone in the chat knows. So I'll just fold this and put it aside. Save it for my scraps. And then because I'm OCD, I like my things to be neat. <laughs> and I am going to take this paper. I'm going to use an open toe foot. It's technically not called an open toe foot. So I know that that's not the real name. That's the Kimberly name that I came up with years ago. So I'm going to take this foot and I'm going to stitch right on the dotted lines. I'm going to just use a regular needle, like just any needle that you have, but I'm going to set my stitch length to 1.5. So I'm gonna stitch on those four lines real quick, and then we're gonna cut that up, put the block together. Okay, so right here you can see, see how that kind of the paper kind of goes, whoop, like it's like bubbled up a little bit. So I don't want that. So after I do this, I'm going to flatten it, repin, because if you leave that bubble there, one side's going to be bigger than the other. So I'm going to do that real quick. We just trim and you can see I tried to stitch directly on the lines. I do use Aurifil Color 2000. That's what I'm using. I use that 90% of the time. Now on the upcoming sew along with Lisa Bonjean that's called American Quilt Along, I am using size 2600. I mean color. <laughs> color 2600 on Aurifil because that's, I, I tried a couple and that was what worked the best and I had a bunch of um, the thread already so it made it easy I didn't have to buy anything I kind of seem to have I don't have a lot of gray thread in my stash because I don't usually stitch or sew with dark fabrics so I had a light and a dark and the light worked better so now there's a couple of ways you can take the paper off I'm going to show you a couple different ways One thing you could do, if you want the paper to come off easiest. Okay, the way that I do it is I pull it back, like on the crease, and just pull this off. If you find that that's not coming off enough, you can take the seam off your machine and iron on the paper side. It will kind of make it crisp and it will make it come off. Now, I personally don't do that at home, but I know some people do, so I just want to show you since I've never shown you that before. Obviously, if you have steam, it might. So I'm gonna put my steam back. And what I can do to press the seams, set the seams, I can kind of stagger. Do the seams, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to press to one side and then I'm going to press open and I kind of stagger them. Then I'm going to clip these little dog ears off first. Are there any questions, Lily? Yeah, yeah, there's a few questions. Uh, first of all, Peyton Jolly says, hello, mom. 
Hi, little pea. Hmm. Oh, let's see. There are a few questions about downloading the pattern. Um, I know a few people were having. Oh, sorry, uh, a few people were having trouble downloading the quilt pattern this morning, um, but we're providing a link that should take you directly to it. So that should be good now. We have- And it should be in the file section of the Facebook group. Oh, yes, that as well. Sandy Taylor's asking, what water do you use in your iron? Is it distilled? I use spring water. On the Aliso in the manufacturer book, it actually says don't use distilled. But I mean, different years I do different things. I mean, if I'm desperate, I'll just use the sink water. And then we had several super chats coming in. So the first one was from Susanna Pastor for $4.99. And she put a little pair that says, keep it up. And it's like working out. Thank you. And then another super chat from Shannon Thompson for $5. Shannon says, Kimberly, you are like Mary Poppins. Your prepping, piecing, and pressing tips have helped me make blocks particularly perfect. Oh, practically perfect in every way. Thank you. That's lovely. So when I'm laying this out, I kind of noticed I have two fabrics that don't have a lot going on and two that do. So when I'm laying this out, if you put, if you put that right there, it's lighter here and darker here. Not that anybody's gonna notice, but I will. So I'm gonna move it so that it's more evenly distributed because I'm OCD like that. Lots of people are wondering, why do you press to one side first and then press open? Okay, so everyone asks that every week. And the reason why is if you have this and you just go to press it, I'm gonna burn myself. Because the steam on the, if you have your iron here and your finger here and you're trying to do that, that steam is gonna burn your finger. Now, if you can do it without burning your finger, that's great, but I know that I'm gonna burn myself. So it is just so I don't burn myself. And I'm going to move this one. No, I'm going to leave it. I think I'm going to leave it. Okay, so now I'm going to double check my placement. I have to double check every single one. I'm going to chain piece down here. And then I'm going to come back and chain piece this at the same right after. And if you do that, when you make your block, you're not going to have the mistake that you saw earlier because you've chain pieced it and you haven't cut it apart. So if you don't chain piece, you're like, you could make that mistake that we just saw earlier. Okay, so I'm going to change the foot on my machine to just a quarter inch foot. And I'm going to go ahead and put these right sides together and pin these before I go to the machine. Okay, and we had another super chat from uh, Kathy Bra for $10. Uh, and Kathy says, finally getting to watch you live today. Thank you and your team for all you do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathy. I was wondering, like today when I drove to work, the traffic was so bad. I was like, oh my gosh. I was wondering, I was like, is there something going on today? I, I mean, yeah. seriously, I was like, okay, this is not, I don't like traffic. Yeah. I mean, nobody does, but. Um, it, it was unusual though, you're right. Yeah, it was, I thought, is there something going on in Austin or? Cause you know, sometimes they have, I mean, not now, but I mean, sometimes they have that like motorcycle thing and oh, yeah. people come in and North, South by Southwest. I mean, I'm sure all that's canceled, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. since I don't watch the news, I really have no idea what's going on. And I actually haven't even really been on Facebook. Okay. So then we'll, because there's enough room here and it's not a tiny block, and to save time, I'm going to add this without ironing first. Now, if it was a six inch block or three inch block, I wouldn't do that. I do cut apart my things. I make sure I've got it right. I don't have it flipped. 
and then I'm going to add these. I'll just pin and then do the same exact thing and then we'll iron. And we had another super chat from Shelly Heron for $4.99. Thank you so much, Shelly. Thank you. I think that's such a cute name, Shelly. Okay, so we're gonna stitch down here and I did make my stitch length a little bit longer because I'm not using the triangle paper now. And when you're, when you press open, you need to be a little bit shorter stitch length. And when you press open, if your stitches start coming out, that just means lower your stitch length. I'm going to set my seams here. Now I have two options here. I can either iron right here, but I'm likely going to hit this seam. So I'm going to turn it around and press this way first. And then set these seams. press to one side and then press open. Now you can do press open at the beginning if you want. I'm just showing you what I do, but I do tend to go pretty fast. Now when I'm on camera, I'm obviously not going as fast because I'm a little bit nervous and it's just different when I'm on camera. But when I'm at home, I'm moving. Like I'm like, boo, da, 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 da. like it's like a complete tornado show in my sewing room. I mean, I go fast. Um, so I know that if I tried to do that, I would burn myself. So you can, you know, I make sure that I move my finger because, and I also find that it looks better this way. It comes out better. Okay. Let that sit a second. And we have another super chat from Linda Gillespie for $9.99. And Linda put a sticker that says thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. She's been a customer forever. Yes. So on here, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Oops. I'm going to cut this, put right sides together, pin. Sorry, Lily, you're good, you're good. I dropped the seam ripper. Now here, I don't have any half square triangle uh, points to match up. I just have fabric. So I just nest it, put the pin in. Thank you for getting that, Lily. Oh, yeah. And then this one, the same thing. And then I'm going to stitch. Ooh, they match. So then, because I've left this connected, I'm not going to put it on reverse. Like, so I just go like this, pin, and then I'll, I'll cut this. The reason I cut that seam right there is when you press open, if you don't cut that, it will hold the, it will make your seam kind of crunchy. Like the seam won't go flat because you've got a thread holding it. If you're just gonna press to one side, you wouldn't need to take that out. And we have a couple new YouTube members. Weather Campos, welcome. Thank you. And then new YouTube member, Karen. Welcome, Thank Karen. You. 
and I saw some people asking about a YouTube members only coupon. Um, we have not put one out this week. We have or have not? We have not. Sorry. Yeah. We have the, not. Yeah. The next one will be next month. Yes. So what Lily and I have planned for the members is once a month, like on January, on all the odd months, I'm going to do a live stream that's like two hours. And on the even months, I'm going to do a coupon. So that's kind of our plan for this year. And we did one two weeks ago with all the Moda updates, but we're also going to show that today at the very end. From Terry Johnson F. Tink, I have you ever scorched lighter fabric trying to get the seam super flat? Well, I showed it last week. I actually scorched some fabric last week. I have no idea how I did it. Um, I don't usually, but I did scorch, but somehow it was on the back. So I don't, I don't know how I did that, but rarely do, but it does happen. So I brought it and showed it. I was just happy that I didn't have to redo it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And from Deborah Lafayette, I am wondering if you have the same ironing station at home or if it's just for your demos. That's just for my demos. Mm -hmm. The one I have at home is basically, I had a cabinet made with the top empty. And then my uncle built like a little plywood, just wood. And then he took, we took some batting fleece, put a bunch of layers down, and then he stapled it on the, like he pulled it over stapled it down here and then we put a cover on it and then so that i don't have to change that cover i put a background fabric down to iron on so that i don't ruin my cover because i don't want to ever have to really replace that and then so let me see a piece of fabric and i'll show you so what i do oops on my, let me show, okay, so here's my block, ta-da! Yay! <laughs> okay, let me put my block up. I don't think there's any mistakes, so I'll put that over here, and I'm gonna show you what I do at home with, I'm gonna give these away with this. So I have like a fancy, mancy, like little cover, it's called I actually don't remember what it's called. I bought it years ago at the Houston Quilt Market. It, um, I'll have to look up what it is. So what I do, because I don't want this to get ruined, is at home I put down a big piece of, pretend this is like a Bella solid, and I put it down double layered like this. And what I do is I will iron all my blocks and then when it starts getting dirty and like little fabrics everywhere, I turn it over. Do the same thing, that'll last a couple weeks. Then when that's a mess, I fold it inside out and then iron on this side till it gets messy, iron on this side till it gets messy and then I throw it out. So it does waste fabric, but saves my ironing pad. I hope that made sense. Yeah. Okay, let me know if you have any questions on any of the socialites before I move on. We had a super chat from Debbie Chips for $24.99. And Debbie says, hello from West Virginia. Thank you, Kimberly and Fat Quarter Shop team for all you do. The positivity and inspiration you encourage is what we all need. Thank she you. She put a bunch of little emojis with the hearts around their faces. Thank you. We try. Thank you so much, Debbie. I just poked myself. New YouTube member, Roberta Aerosmith, but spelled like arrow, like, uh, oh. arrow, not like Aerosmith, like the band. Like arrow flints. Yeah. 
Don't know why I felt the need to clarify that, but yes. Um, and then we had a super chat from Mary Pitchard Ferber for $20. And Mary says, thank you for all you do and your fabulous customer service. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. All right. And then Leanne Davis says, how is Biggie? Oh my gosh, he's good, but he has gotten out twice. We had to pay like $700 to get our fence fixed because I guess when it rained or stormed, it like it like broke the metal. It's a metal fence. So we got that fixed, but he has gotten out twice lately. <coughs> and um, he really needs to be trained, but I think it's a little too late. Aww. Okay, so I'm going to show you the next book that we have with Lori Holt, and um, it is the Kaleidoscope book. And of course, it won't look like this, but this is our draft. And in the book, you're going to have three quilts in three sizes, crib, lap, and queen. And this is kind of how we start out with the books. It's going to have all the skews of her brand new fabric collection called B cross stitch. So it's gonna tell you exactly um, what the SKUs are and it's gonna tell you exactly which block. We're gonna add some, um, what do you call it? Um, squares around it, but like in block one, it tells you what to use if you wanna make it exactly like ours, block seven. And it's laid out so that you can make it exactly like we have it and so this is kind of how the instructions will look. Now, we're gonna have it, ooh, I'm bleeding, sorry. Oh. Yeah, I'm bleeding. Do you need a? Yeah, okay. probably, sorry. So we have traditional piecing methods here and then foundation paper piecing, which is gonna show you how to use half square triangle and flying geese paper. So we just got the blocks back from our sample makers and I'm gonna show you some of the blocks in the book. These are the crib blocks and just some of them we don't have everything finished so this is one of the crib blocks and Lori I'm gonna put a band-aid on sorry um, I don't want to put anything on these um, Lori picked the fabric combos okay I can't open it oh. okay um, she picked the fabric combinations, so it will have a warm and a cool look. And of course, when you make your quilt, you can make it however you like. But these are a couple of the blocks. These were made by Deborah, and they're eight and a half inch blocks for the crib size. So the crib size uses eight and a half. I think it's okay, Lily. I think okay. I'll live. So these are some of the crib, and they look great. So you can either, with this book, you can either, we're giving you instructions to do the traditional method or use triangle paper. And then these flying geese, we're also giving you the traditional method or our flying geese paper. And with the flying geese paper, um, you can only press, you can't press open. So that is the crib blocks. For the lap quilt, these blocks are, thank you. Okay. Girl, you gotta open it. I can't open it. Oh yeah, I can. Okay, okay good. I was like, I opened it halfway. Okay, hold on, sorry guys. This is what happens when we have pins on stuff. <laughs> okay, this is the lap quilt. These blocks were made by Teresa and these are 12 and a half inch blocks for the lap version. So those are just two of them. And of course, when the quilts are done and quilted, we will be showing you all of that. I just wanted to be able to show you as we got a couple of the blocks done. We just got the sample yardage, so this was as fast as we could do it. And again, this is the new B cross stitch fabric that will be coming out soon. And this is the queen version And these are three of the blocks, and these are also made by Teresa. And you can, you can see every quilt is going to be with the same colors. So every quilt is gonna have a block with these same exact colors, these same exact colors. This is just a combo of what we've got. 
So that's three of them. So the quilt will come in three versions, the same block, just three different sizes. So those are the blocks. And then we also have a pillow section. Now all of our pillows are not done yet, um, but this was all the pillows that we had so far. This is an 18 inch pillow made by Deborah. Mm. And so the block has lots of pillow options. This is what we have today to be able to show you what we could get done. Oh, it looks good. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time Lori has ever done purple in her fabric because you guys requested it. I love it. This is a 24 inch pillow. Oh, Lily, that purple's for you then. Yes, it is. <laughs> I, I don't like purple either. Okay, and then this is another 24 inch and these are made by Teresa. But the book is gonna have a lot of different uh, pillows. And the book also has a cross stitch design and we can't show that to you yet because we haven't stitched it all the way. It's, it's not all the way stitched. So we will be showing this book throughout the process as we get more blocks, as we get the quilts quilted, and you can pre-sell the book. It ships in April. The designer of the book is Lori Holt, and it's called Kaleidoscope, and it uses her B cross-stitch fabric. Also by Lori Holt, we are having the Sew by Row. This will be, we're actually already in the middle of this. This is her cross-stitch. So we're on this week now. So actually I've been stitching it all week. I just have to finish this. And so if you want to subscribe to our cross stitch channel, it's called Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. This is our sample. This is Lori's paint and one of her frames. And we're just doing a stitch along where we stitch going down. But we also have a quilt that will be a block of the month. And I'm actually gonna sew along with you guys. It is the Sew by Row Sew Along. The quilt is 74 by 85. It is gonna be a block of the month from March to October. Ships around the 12th of each month. And this is fabric that Lori put together from her different B Basics collections. So she recolored her pattern. Can we grab this off? And then, so she colored all of these fabrics and we're putting the kit together. And when we do this, it's a block of the month. So each month you would get a different row. So you can do each row each time. And I'm going to sew it with you. And in my sewing room, my thought is to put this, I'm going to put this quilt either on the wall or on a ladder. And I'm going to put the cross stitch on the wall so they both match. So here's the front side. So Lily can just pan and then tell me when you're done. <laughs> can you um, take like one tiny step back to stretch it out a little bit, I think? Is that good? You wanna... Yeah, Ash is going to come help you. Because she's right here. Sorry. That's good. Okay, good. There we go. Oh, there Teamwork. We go. That's a lot better. So if you want to sign up for this block of the month, once it sells out, we won't be making more. Thank you and um, but I am gonna stitch I'm gonna sew along with you and I wanted to show you this does have some embroidery right here and Teresa made this right I think Teresa made yes, this she did. Who, who quilted it let me double check uh, Gina quilted it so Gina from thread graffiti quilted it and so on this you can do the embroidery or I mean I guess you can't really leave it off but I'm not sure who I'm gonna get to do my embroidery because I don't know how to embroider and what she did what Teresa did with the buttons I'm gonna show you is because Gina did an all-over pantograph which means you put it on the machine and you push a button and it goes all the way around so because of that, you can't, she didn't want the buttons on first. Mm -hmm. The buttons and the DMC thread do come in your kit in month one. So what she did is she waited till Gina quilted it. And then she used matching thread. So for example, this, she used aqua or greenish thread, you know, the thread that matched the best. And Lori did pick all those threads and she just tied it to the back and then she put a couple of knots 
and then just trimmed it. Um, you could do knots and then push it under. You can do whatever you want. But that is what we did. And so I'm excited to sew along with you guys. So let me know if you have any questions on the Kaleidoscope book or the Sew by Row stuff. Mm -hmm. And then keep going. From Cindy Krell, is a cross-stitch fabric available yet? Cross-stitch fabric? The B cross-stitch fabric collection that we're showing in the previous quilt for Kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope, that cross stitch will be um, in the book and um, we should have the fabric in stock, but we're not releasing any details on that yet because we don't have the thread. Uh, DMC is down to uh, shorter capacity, so getting any kind of DMC right now is a struggle. Um, they're working at 25% capacity as of right now. So um, we're going to release that, but we're going to release it later when we do have the goods. We did order it months ago, but with everything going on, everything is delayed. Also for Lori's fabric collection, beat cross stitch fabric. Can you look online? I can look online. Because I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, it's not here yet, I don't think. Yeah, it's not here yet. So, says February. Next month. So, any day. I Yeah, any day. All right. And, yes, a few people are asking, love the backing, love the fabric collection. Is it Lori Holt? All of this is Lori Holt. The last two things I showed you, everything is Lori Holt. And um, we worked with Lori to handpick every, she basically, with her cute little handwriting and her pencil, she wrote down every single block, every single fabric. And then we have included, um, a, we're gonna have a sheet in there that shows you where everything goes. And you'll have a picture so you'll know, and you can make it exactly like um, Lori planned it. And she is using that originally, that book, you can buy the booklet separately. It's called Sew by Row, but it is included in the block of the month. She did that originally when Riley Blake had a YouTube channel called Imagine, mm -hmm. where they were selling um, different um, tutorials mm -hmm. back years ago. And Lori and I just thought, oh my gosh, we should take that pattern and recolor it so that people who weren't able to do that back then, a couple years ago, we're just gonna make it new again. From Chris R, what level of quilting experience would you need for this block of the month? I would say it's beginner intermediate. Mm -hmm. Some of these pieces are pretty big. I think the hardest part is the embroidery. I mean, for me, it's gonna be really hard. I might send my blocks to um, Cassidy, who is Lori Holt's mm -hmm. daughter, and send her a little check. Mm -hmm. And she does beautiful embroidery, and that's probably what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. From Raylene Pinkham, are there buttons on the sewing machine? Yeah. So right here, there are buttons. And they look really nice. Um, that takes some work to get those down, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, what you could do to make it work is, um, can you, sh can you from that drawer over there, can you pull my double-sided tape? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm like, uh. And I'm gonna show you kind of what, I think it's in that right drawer, yeah. I'm gonna show you how you make it work. So after it's quilted, so after you send it to Gina Tell, just pretend that's here. You take double-sided tape, you put it down on your fabric. And I only use this Scotch double-sided permanent tape. I'm super particular about it. I buy it by the sixes because I use this in cross-stitch to pull up uh, leftover thread or little things that are left over. Then what you do is you stick your buttons down and they stay in place and you put this one on. And then when you put, then when you're done, just pull the, 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 this off. So I would leave this down, put your buttons where you want, and it's not gonna leave anything on your, if you use the right kind of, this is like, I, this is like, I love this stuff. Um, I use it all the time mm -hmm. in my house. Like, I mean, I have, I buy six at a time, so that tells you something. But if you do that, that's how you get these straight. Now, I can't speak for how Teresa did it, but that's what I will do. Mm -hmm. Or I'll send it to Lori, but I don't think so. I think, I think Lori's a little busy. 
Um, it's funny because we're working on something else. Um, Lori and I are working on something else. And so I stayed home yesterday to stitch it because we needed to hit a deadline. And then I came up with this idea all of my, by myself. I was so impressed. And I sent it to Lori and I was like, please say she's going to like it. And she did. And I said, good, I'm taking it to my framer. So neither you or I have to do it. And we don't have to do a video. We can just get this done. Because sometimes, like right now, Lori and I are so packed busy. We have a joke now when we get on the phone. How many minutes it takes us to say, I'm so tired. Aww. And who says it first? <laughs> um, so, yeah. Because I do talk to her on the phone probably once a day. Um, so yeah, I talked to her last night and I was like, oh, I was like so excited that she liked my idea. Cause usually it's her idea. And I was like, oh, let's hope it works. So I said, well, when the frames, cause I bought some frames from Amazon and I said, well, they're not coming until Monday. So as soon as they come, I'm going to open them and we're going to put that in and we're going to make sure it works. Cause then if not, we have to go plan B, C, D, F, G. From Rainia Rafay, what if you already have the book, but just wants to do the block of the month? Um, I would then sell your book on like eBay or something like that and then just join the block of the month. Okay. And a few super chats and members. Marilyn Engler, super chat for $20. And she put a pair that says, thanks for being you, looking at itself in the mirror. Oh, thank Very you. Cute. Thank you, Marilyn. And then super chat from Debbie Marks for $25. Thank you so much, Debbie. Thank you. And Debbie Marks is also a new YouTube member. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you. And next super chat from My So Quilty Life for $5. And they said, good morning, Fat Quarter Shop. I am so happy to catch this live. I can't wait to have a quilty weekend using Lori Holt's fabric and pattern. Hashtag so by row. Thank you. Yes, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm showing you the courthouse steps blocks. This is the best friends quilt along that I'm doing with Lori. So I use the B background and the B basics layer cake. This is a layout that we suggest using our four foundation pads, the log cabin economy, pineapple and courthouse steps. And we have a six inch and a 12 inch size. So the way that Lori and I did this, this week is courthouse steps. So these were last week's. So I'll just show you last week's. These were the harder ones. These are the pineapple paper. Actually, these are all the previous ones. Yes. So these are previous. Lori has stitched hers and on today's video on her channel, which is the Lori Holt YouTube channel, she's going to show you her blocks. She's going to mail me her blocks. I have already pieced the backing. I did a pieced backing. She's going to put an applique label on top of that pieced backing. We're going to assemble this into a quilt and auction it off for Make-A-Wish. So next week you will get the finishing instructions. Mm -hmm. So these are my blocks for this week. Oh, sorry, so yeah, let's show Lori's. Let's we got excited Lori's. to show Lori's blocks over here. <laughs> yeah, so Lori's look great. So we're gonna combine them, Lori and my blocks. And then we're going to auction it off. And I'm hoping, oh my gosh, I'm hoping it goes for a lot of money. I'm actually going to bid on it because I actually want it. <laughs> I think it's so, so cute. I really want it. I'm not kidding. Yeah. I love it. So I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. So let me know any questions on anything I've done because after this, Lily's going to take, we're going to take a break. We're going to clean everything up. We're going to move stuff around. Let's see. Do, 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 do. For Sew by Row, could you buy just the pattern for the quilt? Yep. And it's called Sew by Row Book Lit. Mm -hmm. And it is published by Riley Blake for Lori. And then a few people have asked if we are still working on those floss bitty containers and if we might know when they're going to be in if we are. We are working on them and uh, we're still in the prototype phase. Everything is super slow right now, guys. Everything is like, we used to be able to do things so much faster, but this is just the world we live in now. And I think the last prototype, I think we still wanted one more change. I honestly can't even remember, mm -hmm. but everything is working on it, but it's going to take longer to produce. It's going to take longer to get on a container and it's going to take longer to get through customs. So yeah, mm -hmm. 
that's my life right now. Mm. I can't tell you. Me and Kevin have a joke between us that when people come in our office, we just look at their face and decide, what are they going to say? <laughs> what is the bad news today? Oh. Uh, but I mean, you know, we're just those kind of people where we're just going to push through, but, but we just look at their face like, okay, are they going to say something bad? Oh. Or is it going to be all good? <laughs> but I mean, it's true right now. Everything, like, I'm learning a lot. And I've been doing this 18 years. And this year, um, I've learned a lot about everything that goes into everything, but nothing's going to go fast. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to go fast for a while. Mm -hmm. And it's affecting everybody on everything. For example, I want to do a video on storage. So I have all my storage done. But yesterday, I got this great idea. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. Because I, I was stitching Lori's stuff. So I was, had time to like, you know, have an idea. And I thought, you know, I think they probably have that at the container store. So I looked at container store. The one I liked, it said, oh yeah, out of stock, not in Austin, not in stock till April. And I was like, okay, well, we're gonna go to plan B. Mm -hmm. Well, plan B wasn't there either. Oh. So I'm gonna go tomorrow morning to container store and see if they have what I like. If they don't, I might go to Michael's. There's a Michael's right by it. It's pretty far from my house. Um, but it's kind of one of those things where it's everywhere. The makeup you want, the shoes you want, the everything. The roller skates. Sorry. Yeah. Like every, oh yeah, roller skates. Yeah. It's oh. just anything is going to be delayed and you just have to have grace. Like yeah. what happened to grace? What happened to like, hey, I understand. Like, hey, you got to do like when you look at life, you got to do the best you, got, you can do that day. Some days are going to be great. Some days are going to suck. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Push through and just do it, just do it day to day. You just gotta get through every day and look at the positivity. My kids, when they say things like life isn't fair, you know what I tell them? I say, I know, get in line behind me and deal with it and move on and use positivity to get through it. Mm -hmm. You can't sit around and be negative. It's gonna do nothing for your mental health. You just gotta look at it, figure out a solution and like have plans, plan A, plan B, plan C. So then I was like, oh, well this might work. So I came up with a totally different idea. I showed it to Emma and I said, hey, do you like this compared to the, you know, like this is like the fourth jar I showed her. And she was like, oh, I actually like that the best. So I looked at that as a positive thing because my plan C might work out better than my plan A. Mm -hmm. So you have to be positive. You have to just, instead of sitting there in my bed going, oh man, you know, being negative, I just was like, okay, I'll find something else. I'll find something else. I'll go to a different store. I'll figure it out. Like you have to be positive. Like you're never gonna get through it, especially this year. You're not gonna get through it unless you can like think of, and you just have to be understanding that maybe things aren't here today. Mm -hmm. They'll be here eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, mm -hmm. I went on a tangent. But I do kind of like my plan C, I D, plan C idea, mm -hmm. but I'm a little bit like, it's not really my style. So I'm like, I oh, mm -hmm. have to see. I'm curious. I think Lily, it's kind of like Lily would like it. It looks oh. like a, it's more of like, I'm trying to come up with these jars mm -hmm. that are inexpensive. I don't want to spend like a ton of money. Mm -hmm. So instead of the jars that sit up, they're really not available right now. So they have some that sit sideways that are candy jars. And I thought, well, that might work for thread, because I'm trying to organize my thread um, into like a separate, anyway. We'll see. I'm gonna. T I'm actually gonna go to container store with. I'm not kidding. My quilt that it's gonna go on top of and all about twenty alphabetties, not alphabetties, stitch, floss bitties with the thread on them and everything, and like see how it looks. And my daughter will be so embarrassed. She'll be hiding behind all of the other other aisles because she's gonna be like, Mom, why are you bringing that in here? And I'm gonna be like, because it's fun and people will look at me funny and it's okay, they will walk away, it's funny. Yeah. Like I'm never, she always says things like, mom, don't you think people are gonna think you're weird? I'm like, I don't care if they think I'm weird, mm -hmm. I'm me. And I always try to tell my daughter, why are you trying to be what everybody else is? Why do you have to do your hair like everybody else? Mm -hmm. You don't have to, be yourself, do whatever you wanna do, be weird. Mm -hmm. I was always like the, I don't know, I was like, part of the nerd group, but I was actually kind of one of the cool ones. Oh. I was actually like a cool nerd, but I've never wanted to be like the homecoming queen or any of that. In fact, one time I had somebody tell me, had a therapist tell me, maybe you had four kids because you really hate talking to people. And now when they come to your house or whatever, guess who they talk to, your kids. 
as like a shield because I am so introverted. Mm. It makes sense because if you have, I don't want to sit around and chit chat with anybody. Not even, yeah. So like my kids can do it for me, Mm -hmm. which is pretty true. I love it. (laughs) I'm going off today. I'm sorry. I'm. (laughs) You're good. You're good. A uh, question from Kathy Blacklock. Could you lightly glue the buttons first before stitching for so by row? If you did that, I would use a glue stick, but I don't know that it would stick. And I think if you did a glue, it might get risky because when you pull that needle up, if it gets in that glue, then you've pretty much ruined your needle. And then you're gonna have to start over. So, I mean, I guess you could, but with something like that, I would do trial and error. Maybe try it on something before you go full out. Like, you know, try it on like a, um, like when you trim your batting around the edge before you put the binding on, you will have a stack that has got the front, the back, and the batting. So you could try on that like test piece and see, you know, put some glue, see what happens. Okay, and from Carlene Dickey, do you tear off your paper before sewing the quilt together for bus runs? Yes, so I pulled all my paper off the other day. I sat at my desk and I pulled all my paper off. So I do. And I think when Lori sends it, she's probably gonna send her paper on. I'll just pull her paper off. I like pulling the paper off, it's therapeutic. (laughs) But I did kind of have a mess and like I had the little bits of paper on my floor and I thought, oh, I don't like mess. You can ask Lily. (laughs) I don't like a mess. That's true. All right, and we had a couple new YouTube members. First YouTube member was Lupe Quinojosa. Thank you. Welcome, Lupe. Is that short for Guadalupe? And then new YouTube member, Lois Foster. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to take a little break, and then Lily's going to come show you some stuff she's been sewing. Yeah, go that way, and I'll go this way. Okay, flowers. We're going to circle. I'm going to move all this stuff. Whoa. Getting a lot of stuff over there. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Lily. Sorry. I'm like, why is Kimberly so close? I'm putting my shoes on. <laughs> She's not that close. She's just like over there. She she almost forgot her shoes. Uh, <laughs> hello, I'm Lily. Uh, voice person behind the camera. That's me. Hello. And today I wanted to show you the things I've been working on. So the first thing I've been working on is my block one of the Nebula block of the month. That's with Jaybird quilts and Tula Pink. Uh, So here is my cutting for it. I was going to bring it in and then I decided I wanted to just take a picture because last time I was bringing things in before it was all pieced, I ended up losing a few pieces, uh, which wouldn't be a big deal. There is uh, plenty of extra fabric so far. So Sorry, it's not the journey to Nebula, it's just regular Nebula. Um, But here's my fabric for block one. I've cut the blue one, and then I still need a piece, the orangey, neonish one. But I used the hex and more ruler for this one to cut those half hexes right above it, and then the triangles next to that. Uh, I am using an endurance blade as well to cut through uh, multiple pieces of fabric at the same time, uh, just because it is repetitive. The fabric collection is Tula Pink's True Colors. Um, And for those of you who were asking about starching, there is, um, sorry, you can just take the image off, Ashley. Sorry, Ashley's behind the camera today. So I'm trying to like give give her like hand signs, airplane signs over here. (laughs) I don't want her to do. So sorry, that's the next project I was working on that you got a little peek of there. But for starching for Nebula, the first block, at least so far, I have had plenty of extra fabric from the cutting. So if you starch the Kimberly way, uh, which if you don't know what that is, we can link to some videos where she shows it. Uh, If you starch that way, you should have enough fabric for it. Um, I saw someone had been asking about the way I starch. I can briefly explain it. I put the starch I use up here. So I'll show you Kimberly starch as well. So Kimberly starches with this one, the Faultless Niagara Original Hold. And the starch I've been using, just because it's the one I happen to buy, not for any other reason in particular, has been the Faultless Firm Finish, the gold cap one. The new gold cap one, because the old gold cap has been discontinued. Um, But this one, because it is firm finish, I can just uh, lightly spray my fabric down. I just put it on my ironing board on with the back 
the wrong side up. Uh, spray it down lightly, let it sit and dry for um, like 10, 15 minutes. And then I iron it down and that's all I do. So it shrinks a little bit, but because it's firm finish, it's pretty stiff. Um, so that's gonna be really nice for this walk of the month. And then the second thing I wanted to show you that I am working on is this dress pattern. Um, Kimberly had asked me to make a dress out of the, my favorite color is Moda Yardage, the fabric collection. And this is the Simplicity 8085 pattern. So far I have cut um, most of the pieces. The only thing that's missing is I need to cut some bias tape and a little belt that they actually include that you can make to go with the pattern. Um, so those are my Kai scissors that I use. Those are great scissors. We uh, sell them here at Fat Quarter Shop. And we, if you want the pattern, uh, we also have an Amazon link to that but that is what I have been working on. Let me know if there's any questions. Um, no questions so far, but um, people are loving your um, color choices and they love your blouse. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it was my mom. So, so oh, outfit. Skirt used to be my mom. She gave this to me a few years ago, but the blouse, she visited me in October and she brought the blouse with her, but um, I complimented it and she's like, oh, do you want it? I was like, I mean, yes, but like, I wasn't complimenting you just to get the blouse. Like, I genuinely think it looks great on her, but she was like, I don't like the way it fits, so I'm just gonna give it to you. So today I'm wearing my mom's uh, hand-me-downs, but like, the, she keeps things in pristine condition, so they're, they're lovely. And it, they kind of still smell like her, so it's kind of nice. <laughs> Cherry Geyer is saying, you're ahead of me, Lily. I still haven't taken the fabric out of the packages. Hey, that was me like two days ago. So no shame. Do things at your own pace. Uh, it's still month on, so we're still on block one. We got plenty of time to do it at. Um, but yeah, that's all the questions. Cool. All right. Thank you, Ashley, for helping me out today. Shout out to Ashley. Uh, and I'll hand it back over to Kimberly. Do, 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 do. Bringing my chair. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I gotta get all this stuff out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna show you Stronger Together. This starts next week. So I wanted to remind you so that you have time to get started. This is the quilt, and 100% of the proceeds of the sale of this pattern both cross stitch and quilting are going to UNCF to help with college expenses. And we have lots of information on our blog about it. And you can read the UNCF mission statement. So this is the quilt. It is going to be, can you scroll down on the thing? Oh yeah, sorry. Already. It's gonna start next week and I think it's a four part series. Lily's gonna help me. There we go. Let's see. It starts February 1st, which is Monday, and this is the quilt. It's also sideways, just so you know the quilt. There we go. To me, it goes anyway. So that starts next week, and I wanted to let you know and apologize about the quilt kits on that. We bought to go, can you do the front camera? We bought, that's broke, sorry. We bought enough to make a lot of quilt kits. All the fabric did not come. So when we cut the kits, we sold out in less than 24 hours. So thank you to everyone who bought kits. We are trying to get more fabric from Moda to make more. But again, because of supply and demand, their entire order didn't come in, so they couldn't ship our entire order. So we encourage you to purchase the pattern and come up with your own fabric, which is why we did this wonderful coloring sheet. And you can color in, can you do the top camera? Thanks. So you can color in, like this is your guide, like your, you could paste your fabric here and color it in. And we do hope to have more kits. I'm just not gonna promise something that I have no control over. And we have a cross stitch also. And more information on the cross stitch is on the Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube channel. That pattern 
has two cross stitches so this one mimics the quilt and then this one is more about the vision of it and this is the fabric we use which is the aqua dyed effect so we just wanted to remind you and i'll be showing everything throughout the week i just wanted to show you that we're starting this next week so if you haven't purchased your pattern and you want to start with us we would love for you to start and then I wanted to give a big thank you to Darlene Hall because she was the winning bid on our Stitches from the Heart for Make-A-Wish and we sold that quilt for $5.85 so we're super excited about that. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to Stitchery Sampler. And I'm gonna show you what I did. So this is the block that it's supposed to be. So this with English paper piecing. If you would like to do it the way Joanna wrote it, this is a Joanna Figueroa kit. We still have plenty of kits left. You can also buy the pattern separately. It is called Stitchery Sampler. And we're on week four and Joanna is hosting the sew along so you can find information on her blog. She's fig tree quilts and her YouTube channel. Now, if you want to do this the way Joanna has it in your kit, you do have the paper piecing pieces and you can watch her video or you can watch our videos from Tula Pink on that. So what I decided to do was to make this my block because I'm not gonna English paper piece because that would probably take me 12 hours because I'm a perfectionist and I don't have 12 hours to spare. So this block, I turned into this. What I did, I printed out the free pattern from Socialites for Ser Serenity, which is number 14, and I made 12 three inch blocks. So you can do this with any of the Socialites. Pick one and do the same block 12 nine times i can't count so any of the three inch blocks so even the block from today would work so you just put a three inch block in and you do 12 one and a half by three and a half inch sashings and four one and a half inch cornerstones so this is a way that you can take something that might be too hard and take something free on the internet of course i picked something from us and turn it into this to make it your own so my quilt won't look like anybody else's quilt so this is what i did so again nine three inch blocks from S socialites 12 one and a half by three and a half inch rectangles for sashing and four one and a half inch squares for your posts and what I'm doing as I go is I'm going to be adding the sashing as I go. So I showed this last week. So I've already cut everything. So I'm going to take this home today. And I will go ahead and start adding my sashing here. So I will add my sashing and then next week I will have the sashing on both sides of this and then my next block. So I'm building it as I go so that at the end I'm pretty good. And I also, one of the other things that I'm going to do in advance is I am going to go ahead and pre piece all of these flying geese, but I'm not sure when. I'm gonna do that. Um, it might be this week, might be next week, but I have eight more weeks to do it. So sometime in the next two months, I will start this. It's kind of whenever I have like a burst of energy and had a hot chocolate and <laughs> have a lot of time. So let me know if you have any questions on that. from Kristen Marshall is there a reason for the colors in stronger together I might change them up but not if they're significant yes so if you go back to the floss tube three weeks ago Jocelyn Ung who's the designer of it talks about her color inspiration what the stars mean everything so I would refer you to that um, but yes it is supposed to it, it does signify like the everything 
But, you know, you can make it your own. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to support a charity. House of Stitch and Stash says, can Fat Quarter Shop do a starch test video? It will help all of us see the difference between all of the starching methods and products. Okay, so you can put it on the calendar for April. Okay. For April. I think I can do that. Um, and you can tell the difference. So um, when I do that video, I will do my method, though, where I completely soak the fabric. I will say that. Um, Nova has been using... Can you tell me? Stay Flow. Stay Flow. And she got that. Peach and Gabriel from Kimberly Stitch Squad use that. And she does the step outs for the other videos that we do. I do most of the stuff for the live stream. And then she does the other stuff for the other videos. And it is like stiff. Mm -hmm. It's stiffer than what I do. And I, I don't think I could do it. But there's lots of options. So I can show... Um, a couple of different fault lists. I can show stay flow and I can show the soak starch. And then I think that June Taylor might have a starch, but I need to push that to April. Mm -hmm. um, Cause we're going to start doing the charity stuff soon, mm -hmm. but yeah, we can do that. But I learned that method. I want to give credit where credit is due. I learned that method from Lisa Bonjean and just kind of took it and did my own thing with it, which is what I encourage you guys to do. Like what Lily does. I think that's great. She doesn't soak it all the way. She does it a different way. I say that's great. I think you should do whatever works best for you in your sewing machine because you're going to be the happiest that way. Mm -hmm. And take whatever I say with a grain of salt and do whatever you want to do. I don't care what you do. I don't care anything. I mean, I just want to somehow teach you something. My, my goal is to teach you something. And maybe you learn, you know, one thing out of each video. From Phyllis Curley, I ordered this kit and I'm wondering if I can cut the sashing strips all the same with the fabric that's in the kit. I think about Stitchery Sampler. Oh, I don't know. You have to write it out because I used sample yardage from M Moda t from a long time ago. I ordered it like I do everything way in advance. Like I'm already doing stuff in June. That's for June. Um, and I do that because what if there's a tragedy in my family or what if there's something I have to plan way ahead um, and I don't do well with deadlines. I don't like to be like stress, that'll stress me out. So I like to be way in advance. So, um, but I, what I did is I figured out how much I had and I drew it out before I cut it. So I would do that first. Okay, so yesterday, someone who works for me, Kate emailed me. I haven't been on social media much because to me it's very negative. So she emailed me this and I was so excited about it. So Lily's gonna show you. Uh, Riley Blake Designs is having a block challenge. It is going to be a mystery quilt. It is 16 blocks with 16 designers. The blocks are going to be 10 inches square. It starts next Tuesday. So they announced it yesterday. It starts next Tuesday. And they're going to do three blocks each month on the first, second, and third Tuesday of each month. Now, the last Tuesday of the month, they're going to take a break. Um, just so that if you get too behind, you have some time to breathe. So they have listed, we put a link, Ashley already put a link to where they have all this information and it has fabric requirements, the name of each Riley Blake designer, their blog, all the information is there. So I encourage you to go to their blog and Instagram and I will be sewing along with you. So I saw this yesterday. I really know nothing about it. So and like, I don't know the design or anything. So I'm going to, I've decided I'm going to use Lori Holtz fabric because obviously it's Riley Blake. So I'm going to use um, Riley Blake fabric. And depending on how the first block looks, when I see it, I will either use Prim, Flea Market, or B Cross Stitch because I do have some B Cross Stitch sample yardage that I got in advance. So once, um, once I kind of figure that out, and since they're 10 inch blocks, Lori said maybe a 10 inch layer cake would work. But I do already have like a half yard of all of her fabric in my stash. Mm -hmm. So um, I will be between now and next Friday something. And I will have the block next week. So I'm going to sew along. So they're going to release the blocks on Tuesdays. And on Fridays, I'm going to uh, show you the block. But since I just found out about it yesterday, I have not made final decisions on what I'm doing. And I would encourage you to use your stash. Um, that's what I plan to do is I have all those fabrics that I already 
said in my stash. So from those half yards, if I think a 10 inch square would work, I can just have um, one of my kids cut a 10 inch, um, Emma knows how to use a rotary cutter. She could cut a 10 inch square off and then refold it all. And then I just make my own layer cake. But I am going to use something that I already have except for the background and what i will do is look at their fabric requirement sheet whatever background they have with their fabric requirements i'll probably order a yard more because if there is a width if there's a big long border which i won't know i'm going to want to cut it length of fabric so i always order like a, a yard more now normally i could use what i have in my stash but a couple weeks ago I made sparkle stars and it, I used the three yards that I already had in my stash of B backgrounds and I don't have another B background. So I'm either gonna use that same one and buy more. So basically I'm just giving you my thought process and this is how I think through things is I see them on the internet and I sit on it and I think. And then when I see that first block, I'm gonna sit and think, okay, what works best? And then I'm gonna think about it. And I will draw it out in electric quilt which is a software that I use. It's for beginners. And I, that's the, I don't know how to use like InDesign or whatever we use here. We're fancy. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. So I will draw it out in electric quilt and I will import all the images from Riley Blake's side. And I'll probably just like color it in those designs that I just showed you or fabrics I just told you about and then decide what looks best. And I'll probably text Lori a million times and say, okay, I think this is what I'm doing. And then she'll say, change this because it is nice to have a friend that can be your personal designer. And I am gonna text her about 20 times tomorrow from Container Store. And I'm so excited to go to Container Store because I haven't been there in a long time, but I have to put myself on a budget when I go in that store. Yeah. I have to say, <laughs> only $20 per jar, or some, I have to say $60, $80, I have to, even though it's a business expense, I have to put myself on a budget. Mm -hmm. That store is like, it's like, um. I don't know, it's just like, you just start buying stuff and then you're like, wait a minute, wait, where'd that money go? It's da That store is not good for people like me who just like, oh, da, 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 whatever. That's funny. Uh, all right. From Mary Collins, is this sew along big enough for queen size? I don't know. I don't know, so you'll have to look, and that's what I mean about, um, this, I just found out about it yesterday, so I don't know. Everything is on their blog, and I haven't delved into it. So yesterday, I um, was working on cross-stitch for an upcoming pattern release, and then I had kids that had basketball. Emma had that dance. I didn't go to bed till 1030, so I haven't even had a second. I found out about it. I think Kate emailed me around noon. So I haven't even sat down at my desk enough to know anything about it. So I'm just as fresh with it as you guys. Uh, we're seeing lots of comments here about the container store. Um, people are saying it's like a candy store. Valeria Bauer says she's not allowed to go. <laughs> LOL. It's bad. That was great. Um, and then stitching with the sisterly said no falling at the container store, Kimberly. I know. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so my <laughs> foot. Well, okay, so I fell down Lori stairs, tw tw Lori stairs twice. And, you know, when I go to bed at night now, one of my feet, like at the top, it hurts at night. And I think I've realize it because I'm in bed trying to fall asleep and I'm like you know I might have to go get that x-ray but it's okay I'm just I told Lily like I'm just old I'm falling apart you hit 40 and you're just like I can't bend over like I have to sometimes take Tylenol before I start these live streams because my back will hurt so bad I'm just like oh my gosh what is it gonna be when I'm like 80 I'm gonna be a mess okay we have a few new YouTube members First new YouTube member, Gideon and Sophie. Welcome. And next YouTube member is Amanda Marie. Welcome, Amanda. And then we had a super chat from Daniel Engelhart for $4.99. And Daniel says, thanks for all you do. Thanks. Thank you, Danielle. Okay, I did also want to remind you, uh, Stronger Together starting next week. And our serendipity is starting on March 1st. We've moved it back due to delays, and we have already raised $22,500, so thank you so much. I will, Kevin and I will donate $20,000, so that will make it $52,000. Mm -hmm. Mark Dunn will, will 
donate ten thousand, so that will make it sixty-two thousand. So we have forty thousand dollars more to go. <gasps> Super exciting! Um, the quilt is behind me. It is using the Spring Brook collection by Corey Yoder with a Moda thatched. And so um, we're moving it back just to de delay in the kits. The kits should ship in late February. If they get delayed, we'll just move it back again. We're gonna just go with the flow and whatever whatever works. Our goal in this, 100% charity. We need to get to that $100,000 so that we can grant 10 wishes. Mm -hmm. And the quilt finishes at 64 by 74. And I will be sewing along with you. I haven't started. And on that one, what Lily and I are gonna do, what day of the week is it? Did we decide? Mondays. Mondays. We're going to, um, I will have everything starched, but what I will do is I'm gonna make one block with you guys live. And I will already have it starched though. I do need to starch all that fabric. It's been sitting in my bathroom for like three months, four months. Mm -hmm. And it's just sitting there, it needs to be starched. I probably don't have enough starch though um, to uh, do it, but I do think Container Store sells starch, so maybe they have some. Ooh. I haven't walked in a grocery store in I don't know how many months, so I wouldn't have a clue. I don't have enough starch. I order it from Amazon, but I don't have enough. Uh, people are wondering who Mark Dunn is. Mark Dunn is the owner of Moda Fabrics, and he's very generous. And anytime we have ever asked him to uh, stitch along with us, uh, help contribute, help raise money for charities, he's always right there with us. And he's amazing, and I can't say enough good things about him. Okay, so I wanted to let you know that we did a video on the members only with Moda Collections, and now we're doing it for you guys. Um, and I'm going to just show you kits, notions, all kinds of things. We're going to start with this catalog. It's the January 2021 catalog. You can find it on Moda's site if you want to peek through it. And anything that I pass over just means that we didn't buy it at Fat Quarter Shop because I will skip. So this is kind of an introduction and they put everything um, with designer name, collection. The first one is going to be songbook and then designer's name is Fancy That Design House. And her name is Stephanie Slowinski. She's a brand new Moda designer and so if you wanna read about her, you can read about her. She's cute kids. And there are gonna be towels these are going to be the patterns available and this is the collection it ships in may so this is kind of the colorway and we do have one moda quilt kit that is 73 by 88 and it's this one and lily can show it to you and so that one is going to use the panel and the panels are in the bundle down here and I'll show you pictures of the panels. There are four panels. So the bundle only has, let me see. The bundle only has a couple of the panels. I don't know how many exactly, but this panel has 10 by 13 inch squares, 10 and a half by 13 inch rectangles, sorry. And then these, this one comes in three colorways and the squares are six or five and a half, something, or, something around there, five and a half to six inches. And so this quilt that we just showed you right here uses a combination of the different panels. So that's the first group. And also the, they're selling the, seat, the tea towels. They're gonna come in a set of four. So if you buy it, you would get all four. And there's a tote bag. This is the front and the back. And there are some tins. Now, all of the fabric will be available online for you to see at Fat Quarter Shop. The notions are not all online yet, but the fabric is. And it's very, um, when I look at this fabric, I think of Tennessee. I think of Nashville. I've only been in Nashville once, but it reminds me of Nashville. <laughs> The next group is ombre wovens, and the this is the fabric patterns that Vanessa is coming out with. We don't have the samples here, but this is how it looks. It's 100% cotton and it's woven, so it will be thinner than your regular cotton. 
and like I said, these are the patterns that she designed with it. And if you like any of these patterns and maybe you're not comfortable working with wovens, you can use her regular fabrics also because they're this, this is the same colorway as her cotton fabric. She's also gonna have some 108 inch wide and these are the colors and that's amazing and we did buy a lot of it. The, the, the center will be kind of the lighter and the outsides will be the darker so it's salvage to salvage ships in June. And there's a cloak. Okay, cloak. perfect. So the quilt kit is called Northern Lights. It is 52 by 72 and it's fat quarter friendly and Moda is putting that quilt kit together. The next group is Words to Live By by Ginger Burr. So again, these are the patterns. This is one of, part of the panel. This is the bundle. So this is the fabric and how it looks. These, this is the panel. So this panel, the blocks are about 10 and a half by 11. And so this one's super cute. It's got the sewing and then the rainbow. And this is the quilt kit. It is called Words to Live By. It's 71 by 72. And you can see it uses a combination of the panels. So it's some of its piece, some of its panels. It's a Moda quilt kit. And this is a detail of the fabric. So it's got some really nice white on whites. The next group is called Little Ducklings, and this is one of my favorites. So when I did the video for YouTube members, I picked three of our favorites. So we would love for you guys to comment mm -hmm. and tell us our three favorites at the end. This is one of my three favorites, and these are um, two patterns that go with it. She is a new designer from the UK. Her company name is Paper Cloth, and the founder is Jenny Rivers. Here's the fabric. It's so amazing. I love it. If I had a baby at home, I would definitely be using it. Um, I think the printing on the fabric is really nice and the colors really came out nice and there isn't really anything out here out in the market like it. And so Kevin and I, anytime we see fabric that's very original and you know, there's not something else out there like it, we get really excited. And there is a shortcut quilt called Starry Charms that I believe Jocelyn designed, or Angel, one of the two, and this is gonna be a free shortcut quilt using charm packs. Because I thought, you know, that would be great, especially if people are having babies and they want something easy, and we will be using triangle paper in that video. And this is the panel. This is double gauze, which we did not buy. Here are some new tins that Moda will have. There's gonna be two lunchbox tins and then three smaller tins that you could put pins or scissors or you know, something for the airplane on. Like if you wanna go on the airplane and hide stuff, put it in there. The next group is Sweet Fire Road, which is also another designer. And the fabric, I don't think we have a bundle of it. Okay, so we don't have a bundle of it, so I can't show it to you in person, but these are the four patterns. Um, this one is by Wendy Shepard. This one is gonna be the quilt kit. It is 49 by 58, and that is the darker version. There's, in the quilt, there's two versions, a light and a dark. The quilt is um, packaged by Moda, and this fabric is really nice. So it has a touch of owls, butterflies, flowers, and then this reminds me of Lily's tattoo. It's oh, yeah. got, it's the moon. <laughs> Every time I see it, I think of your tattoo. That's funny. Um, and that will ship in July. The next one is, I, I think this is gonna be very popular and I'll tell you why. Yes. It's so pretty, right? It's called Homemade Homespuns by Kansas Troubles Quilts. It ships in July 
and there's going to be these patterns. Here are the colorways. So if you're wanting to do something fall, this is a great combo. If you want to do something Christmas, you could pull the reds and the greens. If you wanted to do something manly, you could pull these blues and greens. There's a lot you can do with this. These are brushed on one side or softer on one side and then coarser on the other side. And there are some solids and here's the solids. They're kind of at the bottom, but I think the solids are going to give you an ability to have a background on a quilt that you normally don't have with a plaid which makes it where, you know, if you wanted to do a star quilt, you've got a great background to use. The next group we don't have fabric for. It is called So Happy Canvas by Zen Chic. It's six pieces. These are pre-cut, pre-made projects that you can buy. So this is a case that's already Oh, actually, that's not right. These are patterns that you can make, sorry. So three patterns. One is a project bag, a case, and then a bag. And here are the eight fabrics. So there's four black and four cream, and they both have a very nice gold metallic. And these are, all, these are canvas, and it is a heavier weight canvas. And I like that she took these and you can make bags with them and see how she's using the panel, like the camera that comes from here. So you could put any of these on there, any of, well, there's four. You could put either four of these and you could do a project bag. So that is Zen Chic and that ships in May. Sorry, I'm skipping some things. And then this one I, I really like. This is Regency Somerset Blues by Christopher Wilson Tate. And blue and white has always sold well for us. So one thing I would say about quilting is it's just like fashion. It's just like shoes go in and out of style. Mm -hmm. Like pumps, heels, makeup goes in and out of styles. Mm -hmm. Blue and white never goes out of style. So there has never been a blue and white collection that Kevin and I could not sell and did not sell fast. So blue and white is one of the very rare things that we can buy and we can know that we will be able to sell it because it never goes out of style. And that's so rare in any, um, anything that you do. So these are four of the patterns. And so you've got cream. These are a little bit browner a lighter blue, a darker blue, and then a beautiful yellow. And this yellow is showing, um, not correctly on the camera, this is more of a gold. It's showing more yellow, but it is more of an orange, orangish yellow. It's got a cheddar part to it. It's not true yellow. Does that make sense, right, Lily? Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, Lily, am I making sense? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, so this is, this is gonna be great. And this one ships in May. And then Thatched, which is in the quilt behind me, is by Robin Pickens, and it has been a very popular basic, especially this year with masks. Uh, people are using it on the inside of masks, mm -hmm. and there wasn't a true white or a true uh, black. This is a, when I saw it on the fabric, it says soft black, but to me it's a black, like a, um, to me, it's pretty dark. Mm -hmm. So they added, um, what they do with basics, all the companies, what they do is they might have this, maybe there were five SKUs of this in one of her first collections and it sold good. So they thought, well, maybe I'll add it as basics. So then they add 20 SKUs. Well, then it becomes more and more popular and they have to fill in the gaps. So they must not have had this type of green or this kind of color. So they kind of listen to the stores and what colors are missing and add that in. Now you can see the quilt behind me is navy. This is a lighter version of it. So that's how the fabric companies work. In the back, this is the American Quilters Quilt Along that we will be doing with Lisa Bonjean and I will be sewing it. And it uses the American Gatherings Fat Quarter Bundle with four to five yards of a background. And Lisa Bonjean will be hosting the Stitch Along or Sew Along. 
and she is going to make the quilt in four different versions. So all of her blocks will be the same, but she will have four quilts with four different backgrounds. So I actually have not purchased my background because I want to wait and see what Lisa's look like before I do that. Um, there's gonna be a Swoon 16, so along, and the My Favorite Color is Moda is a brand new booklet, and they are having a so along. It's my favorite color is Moda is the hashtag. And I am going to be taking this pattern and I'm gonna be combining it with the low volume fat quarter club. After the January club shifts, I'm gonna bring my block and show it to you. And I'm gonna make that for my sister-in-law. She, um, she likes very modern and retro. So I'm gonna make that and it'll be, I'll have enough time to make it for a Christmas gift. And then they're featuring a new book called Sampler Spree. And um, the book is by Susan Aki. So let me know if you have any questions on that. So this is the first book. So when Moda releases their, their stuff in December, not releases it, but shows stores in December, it always has a holiday and a regular. So that was the regular portion, but I would like to answer any questions on any of that before I move to the holiday. Yeah, from Jody Richards, I noticed that Mona is not cutting honeycombs for any of these groups. Do you know why? If they aren't, that means it wasn't selling good. Mm, okay. Or um, if the designer doesn't do a pattern with it or feature it, you know, it's harder to sell. So that would be my guess. I haven't asked that question specifically, but I would think it's probably due to sales. Uh, and then just a reminder for everyone to keep track of which collections are your favorites so you can tell us your top three favorites at the end. Yes, yeah, so my favorite from that first bucket was Little Gatherings, and then my other two are from this one, I hope mm -hmm. I can remember. If I don't, I know Lily can remember. Yes. And then we did have a new YouTube member, Sharon Davids. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna move to the holiday book. a summary. The first group is called Red Barn Christmas and these are going to all be from a booklet from Sweetwater. So all those patterns will be in one, um, one section and then this will be a standalone pattern. This is the kit called Starlight Sampler. It's 60 by 70 and it's going to be a Moda prepackaged kit and our next kit is going to be called Mini Cake Mints. It is a shortcut quilt. There we go. So this one is a shortcut quilt, meaning that Lily and I will film a video with it. It'll be a completely free pattern. Mm. And then the last quilt we're doing is our Paper Chains pattern, which is a Jolly Bar pattern, and it's 64 by 48. And with any Jolly Bar, you will receive a free pattern in it, and that's the free pattern. And we also have books that use them, but the Jolly Bars are five by 10. And this is the collection. So they usually have this type of look in their collections. This time they did two panels. They are 36 by 58. One is red and white, and one is red and green. And you can see that the quilt kit they're offering uses the red and green. So part of this is applique and part of this is from the panel. It is the designer is Sweetwater. Ships in June and we are pre-selling it. It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. And it, the one thing I really do like about this is I have some older Sweetwater Christmas at home in my stash of stuff that I don't need. And um, I can really combine this with some older stuff that I already have. Also with that, in addition to these two panels right here, sorry, these two we will sell by the panel, meaning they come on the bolt. And again, they're 36 by 58. They're wider, wider, both ways. I don't know the word, but they're wider this way and that way. Oh, yes. So, you, you know, usually a panel is 24 by 44. These are 36 by 58, so they're much more expensive. Now, they also have four more panels. These two come packaged together in a package. 
these two come packaged together in a package. So each package includes two panels that are 36 by 54. So the only way to buy this one is to buy both. And the only way to buy this one is to buy both. And they're cute. The next group is Hustle and Bustle by Basic Gray. These are all new Basic Gray patterns. This one is a quilt kit. It is called Spread Joy and it is fat eighth friendly. Moda has put the kit together. It's 72 by 84. And we also have another kit called Christmas in the City, which will be using the Jolly Bar and the free Jolly Bar pattern. This is the collection. And here it is. And it has kind of a vintage vibe and it doesn't have ice skaters on it, but for some reason when I look at this group, I think of ice skaters, which makes absolutely no sense. I don't know if it's the people walking, but I just think of ice skaters. Huh. Doesn't make any sense, and there are no ice skaters on here, so please don't email me that there's no ice skaters, because I know that, I just think of that. Um, and I love the florals, they're really nice. And there are some grunge in here, some newer grunges. I think there's five. One, two, three four maybe there's four five four okay the next group is called cranberries and cream now unlike red and unlike the blue and white that i talked about red and white does not always sell so blue and white always sells red and white does not but this one will sell because it's amazing so this is a combination of patterns from different designers like Coach House, um, Antler Quilts, all kinds of designers. These are the designers. And the Moda kit is right here. It is Cranberry Frost. It is 100 inches by 100 inches. And it is, so the design is designed by Border Creek Station and they wrote the pattern as a block of the month, but it will come in one kit and that center is appliqued. And I would say before y'all ask, that is advanced. So it is gonna be one beautiful quilt when it's done. I would not attempt it. I would probably stop it. I would probably applique the basket down and say, oh, never mind, I don't have time for that. <laughs> Um, the next one is called On Winter's Day, and it is an It's So Emma pattern designed by Angel. And the next one is called Over the River, and that is a Jolly Bar quilt. So you can see three different looks from it. Here's the collection. It does have a very cream section and a very taupish collection. Like, a, like the cream and the taupe are different, so you could do red and white or red and taupe or mix them all in. And the most popular prints will probably be right here. Anything like this in red and white will sell in this. And I think this is gonna be fabulous. And here's kind of the color of that, that taupe I was talking about. It looks different from the book, but it's pretty. So that is by Three Sisters and that ships in June. We're pre-selling it. The next one is in my top three. It is called Christmas Morning, sorry, Christmas Morning by Layla Boutique. And one thing about this is the background that I've been using and the socialites from On the Farm will look great in this. That was the first thing I thought when I saw this. So I'm always trying to figure out how to use what I do have as a background. These are the four new patterns. They're available as paper and PDF and we have them in stock. I love this one, it's 72 by 80. And we have a couple of kits. The first kit is a table runner called Cotswold and it's from the Table Tastic 2 book by Doug Lico of Antler Quilts. And we will have a photo uh, picture of it when we get the sample. And I picked that, hand picked that from the book because I think this is a great um, collection for a table runner. And we have also shown the Among the Stars quilt. This is going to be a block of the month. I actually ordered this yesterday. So once I put my order in, I can't add to it. So we did order a lot of this and it will ship as a block of the month over nine months, I believe. And it's a combination of 
two different size blocks and each month you make something different and we wrote that book by It's So Emma. So I designed the center and Sarah designed the border and that's one of the first things I ever designed for It's So Emma and then Sarah just recolored it. Sarah does all the coloring and it looks like it might have a spiral. And the next one is called Breakfast with Santa. This is our Jolly Bar pattern. So you can see with our Jolly Bar patterns, they have a lot of flying geese or half square triangles. And the reason we do that is because when you do a half square triangle, you can use both sides and you have very little waist. Mm -hmm. So you can take just a little bit of fabric to make a big quilt. That's our goal with our Jolly Bar designs. And here's the collection, I love it. So here's the collection. It's, this is my absolute favorite. This panel, is sitting in my sewing room. So what I'm gonna do with it, it's 69 by 57, and it's a digitally printed panel. I was supposed to bring it today, but I forgot, so I hogged it. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to match it to a Shannon fabric for the back that's just one of their minkies that's just soft, It does. it's just a solid. I'm gonna try to match this color and then I'm gonna send it to Gina Tell, have her quilt it super tight, and then put a, I think I'm gonna do a cream, like I think this as the binding, because I think that'll kind of bring the center out, if that makes sense. So I'm kind of working on that, and I'll show it to you guys once I do it. And I love it, this is my absolute favorite. So it's Layla Boutique, ships in May. I'm gonna skip a few. The next one is Felicity Batiques by Kate Spain. So we love Kate Spain. She's actually, you know, you meet people in life and you think, man, I wish I could be like her. She's like the most positive person I think I've ever met, the happiest person I've ever met. And like, I miss seeing her. She's one of the people I miss seeing from Quilt Market. So I will say Quilt Market, it's not always my favorite thing to do, um, to go to Quilt Market because I, it used to be my favorite when um, stores didn't want to sell so much to me, but now they all want to sell something to me and they all want something from me. So it's not as fun to go, but I loved seeing Kate. She's so nice and I'm so happy for her with this collection. This is a great summary of it. And it is a batik and these are this is her pattern and then this is a pattern by a different designer. And here's the fabric and it is fabulous. Um, the printing on it is super nice. Um, Kevin and I don't always buy batiks. We're super particular about batiks. And if you ask me why, I'm going to say because of sales. So we try to buy batiks when we know we can sell them. But sometimes when we buy batiks, they don't sell. This will sell. It's beautiful. The gold is nice. It is very Christmassy. You, um, most of the prints are Christmassy. So... Um, it would be a hard one to take off. It wouldn't be one where you could kind of pick and choose and make it non-Christmassy. I think it's pretty Christmassy. Like this is an ornament, trees. But um, really happy for her on this collection. The next one is Home Sweet Holidays. And this is by Deb Strain. And we do have a quilt kit called Toy Store. It's 50 by 66, and so that uses a combination of piecing, like the train is pieced, the gifts are pieced, but that center part and on the bottom, those little inserts, like with the truck, those are panels. So it's a Moda quilt kit. Here are some patterns that are available with it. Right here. This is the kit, so you can see that. And then here is the collection. When I looked at this collection, the first thing I thought was Hobby Lobby. Mm -hmm. Even though I've only been in Hobby Lobby once in the last year, it is very Hobby Lobby-ish when I went to Hobby Lobby. Today, I don't know, maybe I should go to Hobby Lobby and check it out. Um, but the trucks, it's very trendy. The Cardinals, the trucks, the colors, very Hobby Lobby-ish. She has three panels. These are 24 by 44. And she always does three colors. And this time she did red, cream, and black. Here is the fabric. And I wanna show you the trucks. Oh, and this is gonna be really popular, this check. 
here's the truck. So cute. So that is Deb's Shrine, and that ships in June. Okay, this one would probably be my fourth favorite. But I would never sew with it, if I want to be honest. So I'm always honest with you guys. I always tell you guys the truth. I love this, but I want somebody to make me something with it, and I don't want to do it myself. Look at this bundle of deliciousness. Whoa. I know, like. A big bundle. I like big bundles, and I cannot lie. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so <laughs> Yuletide Gathering Flannels by Primitive Gatherings, Lisa Bonjean. I'm sure she will be doing YouTube tutorials now that she has a YouTube channel. Yeah. She is fabulous with flannels. Any kind of advice you need on flannels, you should go straight to Lisa. Bypass Kimberly Jolly. I don't know a thing about flannels. I just love this group. And I love this. This would match my house like crazy. That gray. So that would be so delicious in my house. I don't have very much experience working with flannels, but I do love this line. And if she does some kind of free sew along with it, I would probably be tempted to join. So here you can see all of the fabrics. She does have this panel. It's the first time she has ever done a panel that I can remember. I could be speaking out of turn, but from what I remember, and it's 24 by 44, it is flannel. And right here, she has done this previously um, in her store, which is Primitive Gatherings, and she has a store in Wisconsin and in California. And this is where you can stitch on top of Santa's head without having to trace the design. So I know she's had this before and um, you could embroider on top of it, which I also have no experience in. And she's gonna do some fun stuff with, with this. Okay. The next group is called Warm Winter Wishes by Holly Taylor. It is Holly Taylor's traditional colors and these are all these three are patterns from antler quilts he doug always does lots of patterns with her fabrics this is a windy windy shepherd pattern that is existing that she they just recolored it is traditional colors and this time there are no animals so sometimes holly taylor will have moose or cardinals or some type of animal this time she didn't and this time she has two panels instead of three. She has red and green. And the next collection is called Holiday Essentials. It is by Stacy Itsu. And I'm gonna show them in the order. This is the hollow. I did this last time. You did. <laughs> The last time I did this video, I cannot get my holidays straight. <laughs> Valentine's Day. This is Valentine's Day. That's great. It's, I'm telling you, it's like when you get something in your head, you can't get it out. This is the Halloween. This is the Patriotic. And this is the Christmas. So Moda hasn't really done this before. It is all called Holiday Essentials but they've done pre-cuts by holiday. This is a kit that is called Stars and Stripes. And I forgot the kits from the last group, so I'm gonna talk about those real quick since I <laughs> forgot them. So that one's good. The next one is Winter Wishes. This is a design by Antler Quilts. Jelly Roll Friendly, Moda is kidding it. The next one is Festive Table Runner, which is an It's So Emma pattern. We kind of thought we needed a new It's So Emma pattern with something different, and we haven't um, designed with Holly Taylor before, so I thought that would be good. The next one is called Stars and Stripes. Now, I went ahead and ordered sample yardage from Moda for this. I am hoping to get the pattern from Stacy. I just need to email her, and I'm hoping that we can do a sew along with this quilt kit. Ooh. It is packaged by Moda, and I like it. I think it's fun. I think it's festive. It's Americana. And I have a couple Americana things, but not enough. So I think this would be really cute. And I think it would like hang from my, um, have a little fake fireplace in my kitchen. It's like a fireplace, but it's not a real fireplace. 
Um, like it won't really work. It's just for decoration. So I thought that could hang off of it. Oh. It's 55 by 65. So it's not too big. So I could like fold it in thirds and then put something really heavy on the top and hope it doesn't fall off. Um, the next one is called Merry Making and that is by It's So Emma and you can make that with any of the colorways except for Valentine's Day because the Valentine's um, selection is fewer skews. Mm -hmm. The next one I'm very excited about, it's called Road to Oklahoma and it's from our classic and vintage series and um, it uses the Valentine prints. And I love our classic and vintage series because what we do is we take antique quilts that we find on eBay or, you know, when we used to go to antique stores or we base it on something that has been around a long time and try to make it new for today. So we can make it either traditional or you can make it modern, but it's something that I think is fun to just take something old because it's always good to remember the past and um, move forward with the past in a better way. So I love that. So now I'm going to show you the collection. And these are the four patterns. These patterns are by Stacey Itsu. They're all different. This is the Halloween. Valentine's Day. I love, Kevin loves his Halloween stuff. So Kevin loves Halloween. I don't know why. I don't know what his mother did to him. But she, <laughs> he loves Halloween. He's like so fanatical about it. He like about died when he saw this. He loved it. But I do have to, um, this is Americana and Christmas. And so you can see Americana, Christmas, and Halloween have a lot of skews, and the holiday has fewer. The Valentine's Day has fewer. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I cannot get that right. Okay, so I've shown the kits. So again, this is all called holiday essentials. I hope, I really hope that this does well because I really like the idea of this and I feel like they really hit it out of the park with the colors because they just use simple traditional colors. Sometimes fabric companies will take a, take like a holiday and they'll just change it and it's just too far out there. So anytime I see something with traditional colors, you know, something that is easy for people to use in their home, they don't have to think outside the box a lot, it makes it um, nice. And I mean, who doesn't love pumpkins? The very last group that we have is my second favorite. And it is by Joanna, a fig tree quilt. It's called Pumpkins and Blossoms. Now, if you watch the show, you know that I stitch mostly with Lori Holt, Fig Tree, and Bonnie and Camille. That's kind of my staple. Um, I'll add a, a couple other people in every now and then because I do try to mix it up. But it is really hard for me because I do try to make things. For, for live stream, I try to make a majority of what you see because I want it to be like my show my things, what I like, and just show you what I like. And it's hard for me because I like to decorate with certain designers fabric. And Joanna is one of my absolute favorites. This one is called Pumpkins and Blossoms. And there's something very exciting I'm gonna show you in a second. But these are her newer patterns. They will be available as paper patterns. And the kit will show you the first one is called Harvest Moon. It's Woodland Wonderland recolored. That's not. That's Harvest Moon. Oh, sorry. So, um, okay, go back to the other one. Sorry, my bad. So this one is going to be one of her newer patterns. And she is, you can see, just using some of the colors. So she's not using the green. The next one I'm very excited about. It is called Autumn Wonderland. And we took the Woodland Wonderland pattern by Joanna Figueroa and... Sarah recolored it. The idea is Pat Sloan's. Pat Sloan is going to have a sew along with this. I am going to join her and show all of it on live stream. And I placed the order for this yesterday with Moda. Um, actually, pretty late last night. And because, you know, I do work all the time. 
But um, I love this. I'm so excited to make this. I actually, years ago, when she first came out with Woodland Wonderland, I subscribed to her Block of the Month. I'm halfway done and never finished it. So I'm actually going to try to do it at the same time as this one and have two. And the next one is called Among the Stars. And I also ordered this yesterday. This is very similar. It's the same exact pattern that I showed you earlier in the Christmas morning. So we're also offering it in this colorway and it will be on the back of the book. And our instructions are fabulous and they're all in color and you will love it. And I showed, if you wanna see the blocks on these, I showed them two weeks ago, they or last week, one week or two weeks ago, Lily and I can't remember, but thank you to Teresa and Gina Tell for making those blocks for us. And then the last one is going to be our Cozy Autumn Jolly Bar pattern. And it's 56 by 56. And I'm gonna show you the collection, here it is. And there's so many possibilities with this. Um, you could do, I'm really thinking that some people are just gonna do a green quilt. Mm -hmm. She has never done this green before. It is, mm -hmm. is brighter. She's never done it. And so to me, I just keep thinking, who, which designer is gonna come out with something awesome with just that green? And this, this colorway right here, this and this all match perfectly with All Hallows Eve, which is still available. Now these darker ones might not really match. I mean, they could match, but it would be an additional colorway. This colorway and this colorway are exactly the same colors as All Hallows Eve, so you can mix it in. Now, of course, you could add these. I'm just saying they're not, um, they're, those colors were not used previously. And so that is my Moda presentation. Um, I did want to give a huge thank you to Josie, Sophie, Pam, Pat, and Lisa for all of the wonderful gifts. Um, Y'all sent gifts to Ooh. me, Lisa, Lily, and <laughs> Ashley. Yes. When I get to the two-hour mark, I just look, lose my mind. Um, <laughs> but we want to thank you. I decided to not bring the gifts to show because I don't want everyone in the world to start sending us gifts because we do this for the love of the craft and we try to do as much stuff free and I never expect you to ever send anything and when you do it's great but we don't want to encourage that mm -hmm. so um, I decided to not bring it because I thought mm -hmm. then everyone would be sending stuff and I might get overwhelmed yeah the big thank you to everyone yes. I really do appreciate it let's see questions that have been coming in from Teresa uh, can you can your website create a feature to search our orders? I occasionally don't remember if I ordered something. If you're logged in to your account, you can go back and see past orders. So just create an account. In the event you have a lot of orders and it's hard to scroll through each one. I think she's asking for like a search like to see in her past orders if an item's in there. You know what I mean? Could you email me your request? Email me Kimberly, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y at Fat Quarter Shop, and I will send your request to my husband who happens to be the webmaster, oh, and he can let me know. Excellent. All right, and then earlier she was actually asking as well how Ashley's quilting's going and if she's been enjoying it. It's currently on hold because I am <laughs> stitching along with Stronger Together. Um, but it's been a great process, and I'll let y'all know what I decide to do with my block. Yeah. It's cute. It's sitting right over here. It is sitting right over there. You, you, you want to show grab it? Grab it, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So she's got it. They have cubicles, and she's got it on the outside her cubicle. Yeah. And it is a block from the Bonnie and Camille Quilt Bee book. Yes. And she used, these are, I'm trying to think of what fabric this is. She showed it on the top camera. Oh. So this is her first quilt block. Oh, I know what it is. This yeah. is from years ago. Moda did some where they mixed collections and they sold like a bundle of pink and a bundle of yellow and a bundle of gray. And it's from that. Do we, was that in scraps we found like yeah. around here? Yeah. yeah, that's that's what yeah. happened. That's so it's probably like, left over it. from uh, from that bundle. But look, it looks great. It's her first block. Yay. Yay. Go, Ashley. Yes, but if you want to see more of her work, we are showing her stitching on the cross tube channel, Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. Look at that. Okay, and then lots of people want to know what your nail polish color is, Kimberly. Cajun Shrimp OPI. I never change it. 
when I walk in the nail place, the lady says, same color? I say, same color. <laughs> they know. And I don't tell them the color. They just go get it. But I, because I only go to one place. I will tell you a little story. Last, yeah, last Thursday. Yeah, last Thursday I went to get my hair cut. And then I need to get my nails done. And Kevin was going to take the boys to basketball. So that was going to work out. So I went and they didn't have room. And so I thought, okay, I'll go try another place. Because, I mean, you know, it's just your nails. Who cares? Like, you don't have to go to the same place. So I went somewhere else. And I don't know what they did, but on Saturday, so that was Thursday, Saturday, my nail polish started coming off. So I, it was like peeling off. So then I, I got all ready on Monday to come film. And I was driving and I looked at my steering wheel and I was like, Lily, I can't film. I had to call her and say, oh, I can't film. I don't have two of my nails on. So I learned to not change places. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a funny conversation. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's just we. And then I mean, I don't have nail polish. I don't have any at work. I mean, I can't just like throw it on. I don't. But I probably should have some because I could have just like thrown it on. But yeah, it was. Um, I guess it's a learning experience. But I I mean, like you could get totally mad about that. But I just actually thought it was hilarious. I was like, Emma, can you believe I did that? And she's like, you should have just waited. You're so impatient. You should have just waited in your car for when they had an appointment. I was like, yeah, I know I should have, but I didn't. Oh. All right. And then Toothruff was asking if I said I spray starch the back of the fabric instead of the front. Uh, yes, that's correct. Although for most of the fabric I showed you, it didn't matter because it was solids. So there is no back oh, okay. or front. Yes. Do you starch on the front or the back, Kimberly, or both? I starch, it doesn't matter. I starch all the way through, so it's whatever whatever gets on my ironing board, whichever way it flips up, <laughs> that's how I iron it. And it goes through all the way, so it doesn't really matter. Because I soak it. like, And you can tell, okay, so like if I'm super stressed out, you can tell because the next day when I get my starch, I'm like, oh my gosh, I overstarched that. You can. That's how I can tell if I'm stressed out. Oh. I'm like, oh my gosh, because I can overstarch. To where I'm like, okay, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, yeah, that was just too much. Uh, for your nails, do you do gel or dip? Gel. Yes. And I try to go only, I try to go like every 10 days. I try to make it last 10 days. I've never made it to 14 days because I cross stitch so much that, you know, and I think that's what happened is I was cross stitching and it went under the bubble and then it just came off. All right, and before we wrap up, Kimberly, what were your three favorite fabric collections from the ones we showed from Moda? Okay, Little Ducklings, mm -hmm. Christmas Morning, and Pumpkins and Blossoms. Nice. Okay, you tell yours. Okay, uh, Little Ducklings, <laughs> Cranberries and Cream, uh, and hang on, I need to go back to the list and look at it because I forgot the name of it. Um, Christmas Morning. Okay. Layla Boutique. Well, that's pretty much mine. That's pretty, yeah, it's just one different. That's weird. That is weird. Because <laughs> we're totally different. Okay, okay, Ashley, you say yours. Yes, Ashley's. Oh, yeah, sorry. We'll have to look at the names. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> easier for me like. because I buy the fabric, so I've seen it a million times. Um, Words to Live by. Uh, I think Winter Wishes. And cranberries and cream. See that red and white. It's really cute. <laughs> so you guys, thanks so much for watching us. We've enjoyed our time with you today. We would love for you to comment and tell us your favorite three, so we know, um, you know, what you're what you're really liking. And I'll see you next Friday. Bye, everyone.